Hey guys, Les here from Sixus One and CG Bytes with a quick video going over something that's kind of a frequent topic that I've been getting um, uh, questions about um, from uh, from artists bringing content to CG Bytes, and that is um, regarding some of the uh, the different full body morphs and things that are found um, in the uh, pardon me in the uh, the G3 female uh, and G3 male figures and how to um, adjust your clothing for some of those full body morphs and, and for better compatibility with character sets and things that are popular out there. So I've kind of boiled it down to a series of, of steps. Now they vary from time to time depending on how a character set on the G3 chassis is set up. So it, it's like a lot of things with this, it's not always the same exact set of steps, but it's gonna be pretty close. So um, anyway, here I'm, I'm working with a, uh, an outfit that um, uh, is from uh, Carlos uh, M. Bernal, a, uh, a new uh, artist bringing stuff to uh, CG Bytes, and someone uh, who, a uh, super cool guy who's been attending some of the seminars, and really cool watching him learn and, 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 and grow with this, and he's been kind enough to, uh, to let me use an outfit of his as kind of the... Uh, uh, the test subject for uh, for this demonstration. So what I'm going to do is take this this quick uh, outfit that he has designed here, this sort of uh, sci-fi style bodysuit, and I have it placed on the G3 female, and I'm going to use the Bethany shape as my example. Now obviously we could go through and do this with tons of shapes, and that would be kind of exhaustive on time. Um, but what I'm what I'm going to detail here real quick, and I've made some notes on it, which can see in notepad haha -ha. um, what I'm going to detail here is is just a simple set of steps on how to correct and set up full body morphs that correspond to existing characters um, and ones that may use some different different elements of the g3 rigging like scaling and things like that that are not actually morphs if you've listened to uh, some some of the past seminars you've probably heard me go on some small rants about how you know not everything is a morph there's lots of things people refer to as morphs that are not actually morphs, especially when it comes to these larger character kits. And, and when people refer to these as morphs, sometimes that creates confusion because you're not actually understanding what's going on. Um, I, I will refer to them as character kits or character setups and things like that, uh, rather than just saying, oh, the, the Bethany morph. Um, because, yeah, technically it is a morph because, I mean, there's morph data, there's some sculpting and shaping on that. But a lot of times there's going to be other things involved, too, like translations and rotations and scaling and all kinds of stuff that is not morph data at all. So, um, and the, the reason that that, that, uh, that, that terminology and, and misuse at times, in my opinion, of terminology kind of bothers me is that... It, uh, uh, it creates a difficulty in communication when talking about this stuff because you may say something's a morph and it's not actually a morph. So then someone who's trying to learn this stuff says, oh, why can't I get to this particular suit or piece of clothing to work with this quote unquote morph? Well, you're having trouble because it's not actually a morph or it's not only a morph. So there's more to think about there. And that's that's a lot of what we're going to be focusing on in this video. So let's go ahead and jump in. And I'm going to switch back over to Notab for a second so you can just see here. I thought this was kind of as, as cheesy, simple as it is. It's just a great way to put my thoughts on screen so you can read them as, I'm, as I go over them. So the, the basic steps in creating these full body morphs, these FBM corrections, um, are, are really simple. Okay, first we're going to analyze the full body morph. We're going to look to see if it's a single morph or a set of morphs or controllers or other things like that. So the first thing we need to do is turn on a full body morph. So let's turn the full Bethany morph all the way on. And I have those, uh, uh, the different elements of the Beth that Bethany morph, uh, la, 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 pardon me, it's hard to say really quickly, uh, of the Bethany morph favorited so that I can get to them quickly here uh, and not have to bog time down with drilling through the, the dials and things. So once I have the morph turned on, I'm going to right click and I'm going to select the suit and then I'm going to hit currently used and under currently used we'll see what is used. So here we see that we have the Bethany morph engaged 
because that is that is being driven. So do that. So let's go back to Genesis female. <coughs> Pardon me. And I'll restore that figure. Now, if we look at Bethany, okay, we will find though that this dial for Bethany controls three different things. If we go into the parameters for that dial, any full character setup like this, if you go into the parameters for the dial, you should see all of the things listed under subcomponents that it controls. <coughs> That's probably the most comprehensive way to see what is being driven by a given dial. So here we can see that it's driven by our Genesis 3 female scale. So let's just go to our scale dial on the Genesis 3 female and double check that. And here we see that's working pretty well. Okay, so the suit, we don't have a problem with that. So we don't need to do an adjustment of any kind for the scale. So then let's look again and see we have Bethany 7 head, which I've already favorited here. So if I turn that up, you'll see it just affects the head. There's nothing on this suit that, that comes into play with that. So again, we're good there. So the other thing that we saw in here that's driven by the Bethany 7 slider is Bethany 7 body. So here, if we turn that up, we'll be turning up Bethany 7 body and we won't be engaging the scale dial as is linked up in the actual Bethany 7 uh, full character uh, controller here. So this would then be our starting point. We're going to start off with correcting the actual morph, which is Bethany 7 body. And to do that, I'm going to send the G3 female and the clothing over to ZBrush. So let's give that just a minute to load up. And this should be a really straightforward um, uh, correction here. So once this gets to ZBrush, I'm going to go into edit mode, I'm going to turn on symmetry, and just take my standard tool and lightly brush over the surface, maybe a little bit of smoothing. It's always strange when you work with someone else's uh, mesh, or at least it's strange for me. So Here we'll just brush over all of this so that we see that we don't have any intersections. There we go, there we go. And almost there. See a little bit of poke through on the feet. Maybe use a little bit of an inflate around these ankles here. Okay. Okay. And once you're satisfied with your, your correction to the shape inside ZBrush, or whatever other modeler you're using, by the way. You could also just, you could export an OBJ of just the suit, um, or the suit and the character together, and edit it that way, and then save that out as an OBJ and use Morph Loader Pro. Um, I'm not gonna get into that, uh, the specifics of that, because the only real difference between that and using GoZ to ZBrush is uh, you'd be exporting an OBJ, taking that into the modeler of your choice, making the corrections there, then saving out the OBJ again and loading it in through Morph Loader. And the dialogue from Morph Loader uh, has actually the same options inside it that you're going to see opened up here in just a moment through GoZ. So uh, there's actually a very uh, a similar shared workflow between those. So now that we have our shape corrected, we'll send this back over to, uh, oh, wait a second. We're going to need to send that back over to Daz Studio, but before we do, we want to make sure that we have 
copy the internal name for this morph. Okay, so here I'm just going to select this text from the name field, hit accept, and I'm pulling that from the actual suit figure just so I can make sure I have exactly the right name. So now we'll be sending that over and we'll click on basic so that we go here and place, uh, hit control V to place the text that we copied into the morph name. Then we'll override existing morph. Now I'm going to hit advanced again, come inside this dialog. And this is the dialog that looks just like what you'll see um, that you can open up from inside Morph Loader Pro if you go that route. So then under override existing, I'm going to right click and hit deltas only. Then under reverse deformations, where it says preserve existing deltas, I'll right click and hit yes. And then we'll hit accept. Give that just a moment to process. And barring any uh, major issues with the actual mesh itself, it should, uh, we should see it snap into place. There we are. So now, if I go back to my G3 female and I restore the figure, if I turn up Bethany 7 body, the suit should follow just fine. And then if I turn up Bethany 7, which engages the scaling, I uh, since the scaling is separate, but we already checked it and the scaling was fine, we didn't need to do anything at, uh, to that. So the combination of scaling and the morph that we just corrected uh, will be engaged with this as well. And so now all of these are good. So at this point we are ready to save out our suit. So I'll right click and go to suit. So I want to make sure I have this turned on first. Let's go back to the G3 female. Back to my favorites. We'll turn up Bethany 7. Now I'm going to select the suit and I'll go to currently use. That way it's much easier to find than drilling through all those, those lists. And I'm going to open up the parameter settings for that morph. I'm going to change it. Make sure. Uh, and I, I do believe GoZ actually automatically does this. When you replace it, it changes it to modifier shape. Uh, but just in case, I like to double check because a lot of times uh, these morphs will show up as modifier shape generated. And if they do, then the next time you load the suit in onto the figure, it will regenerate that shape and it will kick out any morph data that you've sculpted. So you want to make sure that you have that set to modifier shape so it knows not to regenerate that. So now with that set, and our morph in place, we can save, uh, resave the uh, the outfit, and we're good to go. So that uh, that really is the process for the most part um, for uh, for correcting full body morphs and setting up full body morphs to be compatible with different kits that you find on the Genesis figures. Um, the uh, the process again is really pretty simple. We'll analyze the full body morph, look to see if it's a single morph or a set of morphs and other controllers. Um, if it's a single morph, then we can just send it to ZBrush, correct it, and send it back through using the overwrite method that I showed you here. And if it's a combination of morphs, we want to break that up uh, one by one, turning each of those individual morphs on or controllers, sending those over, making our correction, and then bringing them back over together, uh, rather than using the one uh, overriding controller for all of it at once. So that way you get all those different pieces so that then when your outfit goes on the figure and a user wants to dial in maybe a little of, of one aspect of a character or, or however they want to use it, then then you're actually having full deep compatibility all the way through the character set and not just with the overriding shape. And, uh, and also sometimes if you try to do a correction to just what looks like an overriding shape uh, or an overriding controller instead of its sub-components, 
then uh, you can end up having conflicts that will produce some very strange and kind of hard to troubleshoot results. So this methodology I've come up with uh, seems to work pretty well and uh, uh, makes a lot of sense. So I hope that uh, I hope that works for you. If you have any problems or questions, you can always reach out to me uh, through Facebook, uh, CG Bytes, uh, YouTube. Uh, let's see. Those are, those are the normal channels where you can find me. Um, if you dig what I'm showing here, if, you, if you're into this stuff and you, you get something from it and you like the videos and things that we do, be sure to like and subscribe to all of the videos here on CG Bytes. And if you are a budding content creator in the 3D realm and are interested in uh, creating and selling content uh, to a... Uh, a pretty solid market, I would encourage you to go take a look at uh, CG Bytes as a potential place for uh, for selling your content and uh, reach out to us there. Uh, I act as the, the director of artist development for CG Bytes and in that capacity I am pretty much always available to help you guys with any questions you have in creating your content. So uh, that's just one of the other little benefits that they have uh, uh, waiting for you there uh, at CG Bytes. So anyway, I hope you enjoy the video. Hope you pick up some cool tips and tricks from it. Um, again, I am Les Garner from 6s1 Media and CG Bytes. And until next time, keep making cool stuff. Thanks, guys.